Hey guys, welcome back to Evolving Mail. So today we're working on Dad's Jeep again, his 1978 CJ7, and the brakes are screwed up. And I already got one brake off. Um, and I come over here just to help him put it back together, but uh, it wasn't a problem. So the issue we got here is, let me turn this around. The issue is the um, caliper is locking up and it doesn't want to go back in. Um, so he doesn't have a lot of brakes. So we took the wheel off, ascertained that the pads were actually okay and the caliper is bad so I got two new calipers we're gonna use the old pads because they're like 90 85 90 percent new so we're not gonna worry about that but we are gonna go ahead and get get these calipers done so stay tuned right after this intro we're gonna go and thanks for coming back I'm not, I'm not there right now. Okay, so we've already got the caliper off, like I said, and I got this I got a 14 mil wrench to take this line off. And I got these little things from the store. These little, these little things it's supposed to help it not leak when I get this off. So I, I don't, I've never seen this before, so we're gonna find out how this works. It's probably gonna wanna leak like crazy here in a second. Um, it's okay. It's not in my driveway. So. <laughs> So huh. this plug goes on the end of this when I pull this off. So oddly enough, it's not really leaking a whole lot, which is, I don't know if it's a good sign or a bad sign. I'm gonna go ahead and put that on right there just to cover it up. Take this one off. Now in this box right here is hopefully the exact same. Just a bit of a guess, so hopefully it's the exact same thing. Uh, I mean, I had to know what size the rear brakes are that are that are not disc. They're the um, drum brakes. So I had to know what those were for this to work. It's pretty strange. Um, it doesn't look exact. Doesn't have whatever that is. Yep, and this is not right. Son of a mother! Ain't that a bitch? So this is not right. Well, you're gonna have take to take it take it take the old one in too. Yep, we're gonna take the old one in and find the right one. So, okay. And that's all from Revolving. And that's all for Revolving Mail for today. So stay <laughs> tuned as we go back to the store, uh, return these, and start over. Um, hey guys. So it's a couple days later, and I think I got the right. I think now we got the right one. So, um, I need to take a look at the chief. But the dad says this is a 78 CJ7. And all this time, I have sworn to him that it's not. That it's a 80 something. And um, so when I went there, none of the, at AutoZone, none of the um, brakes that are available for, for 1978 or 79 CJ7 are the ones I need. They all have the, um, they, there were bolts that go through them like, like this. So this one has bolts that go through all the way, like in, well not all the way, but holds it on. So mounts in the back, back side of the cal caliper, and bolts that go through the back. And none of them had this. Um, so all of the ones that were shown for this vehicle were the kind that just had like the clips that clip on and hold the thing on. So not gonna work. So um, I said, just try, try 83. Some 83 sticking in my brain for some reason when I was doing the pipe on this, the exhaust pipe. So um, I know that 83 was the year I think they changed from a straight exhaust pipe down to one that has a little, um, trying to collect some of the some of the gases and stuff, so a little bit more environmentally friendly or whatever. So I just thought maybe that's it, because I know that was a change, a year of change. Um, and lo and behold, here we go, that's right. So we're just gonna, we're gonna pull you in here a little bit closer and we're gonna take this and this is, take you down excuse the awful camera work so we got some got the line here and i'm gonna before i do anything i'm just gonna mount this up and make sure that it mounts i'll put it right in here and look a looky bobbing mail gets a cookie it works so that, that that's it that goes in there just fine um i gotta find the right allen wrench dad was 
using some ghetto Allen wrench thing because um, he screwed it up and he had done some stuff to get it to work. So I don't know if I got the right one because I'm always seem to be missing the right Allen wrench. Um, sure as shit, I'm missing the right one. So that's not it. Which one it is? I think it's this, which is a number six. Nope, not a number six. Let's try number eight. Damn it. Let's try number eight. I don't know what the hell it is. Some weird ass size. Oh my god. Fits. I don't know. I gotta go find the Allen wrench that I was using in Dad's. So bear with me. I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I found the Allen wrench, but I couldn't tell you what it is because my dad has modified it to fit. Because I've tried the standard and I've tried the metric, and nothing seems to want to go in this thing um, that he's got. And all I brought with me was was metric, like a dumb dumb, thinking that this would be metric, but it is standard. But you never know. Um, like the newer Jeeps, I have a lot of, I have a lot of metric, so, you know, mostly metric, I think, but, um, whatever, it's working, gotta make do with what you got, so tighten it up, and on the back of this thing, down here at the bottom, there is screw that's 4,000 feet long. There's a screw. So down here at the bottom there's a little like a little banjo banjo style fitting. That's what it's called. It's got a little hole in it. So that goes in there like that. Um, he's already, dad's already got one attached over here. There's some clips that came with this to hold the, um, pads in, but I don't need it. So there's a fitting right here. And then you got two, two, um, little brass, copper, whatever they are, things. So what they're going to do is, if you look at this line right here, take you in closer I bring in here you can see this line and it's got this black thing on here it's just a basically a plug to keep it from leaking more when I pull it off so and it's not really leaking so I'm gonna pull I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out and take these for some reason it's not really leaking but I'm gonna go ahead and take these washers off replace them with new ones because they are designed like crush that one. I'm going to take the, both of them off. Okay. I'm going to take the new, the new bolt. There's the old bolt and here's the new bolt. A little bit difference. Um, not much though. I'm going to put, I'm going to go ahead and put the washer on this. I'm going to take the other washer and I'm going to put it on the other side of this, of this line. And it is starting to leak out a little bit right now when it goes down like that. When I, when I drop it down. So then I just got to put this line back in the caliper. And see the things you learn on camera. So. I have to take. I put the wrong caliper on. Apparently there is a left and a right. Oh. Hi, caramba. Apparently there's a left and a right. So I'll show you the difference here in a second. And some of you are going to know exactly what I did. And some of you are probably waiting to see. Well, all of you are waiting to see because um, I haven't told you that. But I'll tell you in a second. Okay, so I'll explain it to you. So both of these calipers mount to the back side of the, um, of, the, of the rotor, meaning towards the rear of the vehicle instead of the front side. So when I mount this on here like that, I know it's the other side because the fitting, the fitting for the line is at the bottom. 
where the other caliper, the fitting is at the top, right there. See the fitting? That's the fitting, and this one is the bottom. When I move this one to the other side of the vehicle, and it goes on like that, the fitting will be at the top. So when I was trying to put the line on, the hose is not wanting to act right. So simple, simple, simple thing. Um, just didn't think about it. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take this washer. Or the, I'm going to take this new fitting out. I'm going to stick it on the other one. Then I'm going to install the new caliper right now. Okay, so here we are inside. I'm just going to take, pull both of these, both of these bolts right here out. So you see how they push in. You just want to push them back out so they're out of the way. And then we're going to line them with this. There's the hole right there. One hole. There's the other hole. We're just going to line these up. Pads are already in place. Lined up is difficult because you can't really see. Damn. Sorry, especially when you hit the camera. And once you get her lined up, she goes right in. A couple turns, tightens right up. Snuck it down through the bottom side right here. Take it down a little bit so you can see. Bottom side. May have to wiggle it just a little bit. It goes in. Sometimes you gotta wiggle it to get it in. Sorry, hit the camera on the way. Not a lot of room in here, guys. Okay. Put this in there. Put in there. Now, go ahead and take this little cap cap off and right back here is the spot to put this in and now that I've done this I can see that there's not a lot of room back here there's just enough room so next time I should probably put the caliper put the line on the caliper first but I will there's just enough room to get it there I go just can't see anything and that washer kept getting in the way but the hole. I'll start it on the other side first. Just leave it on there loose, it'll make it a lot easier. Okay, make sure you got this in a nice spot. Just kind of doesn't really want to be up here. I think we'll just take it right about there. Then I'm just gonna tighten this up. Maybe. Okay, so that's it. So now, what I'm going to do is I am going to um, find one of these wrenches in this pack right here. Pack the wrenches I got. I'm going to make sure that this um, make sure this bleeder valve is closed. There, bleeder's closed. Okay. While I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and check the other the other one, on the other side. Closed. Cause I don't need to bleed these because I didn't really leak anything and I've got a I've got a um, master cylinder full of full of fluid so I'm going to double check the master fluid or master cylinder right now 
and the master cylinder is kind of low. And I'll take you out, let you see. Okay, guys, so come up here to the master cylinder. I don't know if you can see it's kind of low. So I'm going to put some fluid in there. So as long as you're careful and you don't bleed that all the way down, you shouldn't suck any air in the line. Okay. So we're going to put some fluid in there. Fill it back up pretty good because when I press down on this master zone or on this brake pedal, it is going to um, pull some of that fluid away into the line into this um, caliper. So hold on a second. Okay, I'm going to go in and press the brake, and when I press the brake, you'll see see this gap right in here. The cap's going to go away. Hopefully. So, yep, it went away. I'm gonna press it some more. Okay, guys. So, I had to put some, I had to put the cap back on the master cylinder, and because um, it was acting a little weird, and it was shooting. Look, I got fluid. It was shooting fluid all over the place, so it wasn't holding it really good. But um, it's no harm, no foul. It's not on the paint. That's all that matters. And then I'm going to do the other side. So once I put the cap back on there, it's no more sponginess. Now this Jeep is old and doesn't have a booster. There's no brake booster on this thing. So it's manual brakes. You know, manual, I guess that's what it's called, manual brakes. So there's not power brakes. Um, not like new cars. There is a difference. Um, a huge difference. It's a big difference. Um, but it does, they do work. But they'll throw you through the thing. They're almost too good sometimes. But, um, but they fade. So... Anyway, this should be a lot better. I did get some fluid on the floor. Sorry, Dad. Anyway, I'm going to put the wheel back on, and then we're going to do those sides. So stay tuned for my favorite part ever. take it for a spin Let's see how she goes stay tuned okay so I was putting the wheel back on and I had the lug nuts snug and the whole the whole hub is sitting there moving around so see this that is not good that means the bearing screwed up most likely so I'm taking the locker uh, hub locking hub off here So I can try to get to this. B 
being careful because I really don't know what the hell is in here. Let's see. Okay, so got a spring, some stuff. So now I get to take the damn caliper off again. <laughs> so dad gets me to come over, actually my mom, but come over here to do the pads on his on his Jeep and I wind up replacing rotors and now I'm gonna wind up fixing this axle. It looks better than dad dying in a car fire the car accident. He's the only dad I got. He ain't much but he's all I got. <laughs> Okay, so caliper back off. We'll stick that over there, out of the way. Now, take the. You don't happen to have a. Um, you don't happen to have, and I have it at home. I need a snap ring, pliers. Uh, here. Oh my god, he's got snap ring pliers. And he had them handy. Alright, so this this part of this locking hub was up in here, and all I did was um I'm sorry, like that. All I did was put a screwdriver back in here and I popped this off. I forgot to turn the camera back on. So got that off. Set this to the side. There's a couple nuts in here and um they're loose. I didn't, this is this loose. I didn't do this. Okay. Look at that. Loose. Then there's a, um, a little locking tab in here. And the way that it is, is the axle's got a, uh, axle's got a little groove in there. Axle's got a little groove that fits. This little tooth goes in the groove, so this can't move. Um, so that, that nut's just holding in there, which is not a big deal, but this nut also is loose, so um, this is bad. Right here. dirt that I just put in there looks it's pretty good that's, that's not bad dad dad has replaced this not that long ago so he more than likely yeah he more than likely you just, need to get him just needs to be tightened back up so I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on clean my hands. Before we put everything back together, we'll clean this rotor so we don't get glazing. But, um, a screwdriver and a hammer and bang on it. Yeah, he said a screwdriver and a hammer and bang on it, but I have to say, Dad, how did that work out last time? <laughs> <laughs> so, but that's how I would do it too, probably. I mean, I have access to all kinds of proper stuff. <laughs> It's in there. It ain't going on. So I am going to uh, lose my freaking mind looking for stuff. Yeah, I know. I'm just trying to get everything. Put this nut on here. This is the most important nut because this is the one that's actually holding it together. My mom pulling up, driving like a madman. That's what she does. Where I get it from. No, I don't bag at all. That just sticks right away. It, it just did a little bit till I saw it move just a little bit. Because you don't want to compress the bearing too much. Because then you put too much pressure on the bearing. So I'll put the other lock ring in there. I'm gonna run this up and do the same. This is how this works. So as I turn this handle, 
it's going to push this piece in and engage it. It engages. So that that ring is now close. See how close it is? And as I back it off, the ring goes down. So all that's doing is that's pushing. That is, that is I need to put the, this, this, see, I got everything backwards because I've never paid attention to this before. So we're going to take the snap ring, snap ring back off. We're going to take the other snap ring off. So this goes behind here. So what this is doing, this spring is constantly pushing out. Let me take you a little closer. We're going to show you. Sorry. So, so this spring is constantly pushing this gear out. See? Boop, boop, boop. Out like a slinky. So without this there, we can, we can visualize it better. So when we turn this, we turn this thing inward, or outward, let me see. When we turn it this way, you can see that piece comes up that I was just showing that piece, the pe inner piece comes out. It moves this way, right? So what, what we're doing as we move that out, let me put it back. All right, as we move that out, it comes out, it pushes against this. It literally pushes against this right there. And all it's gonna do is gonna lock that in. And when it locks that in, you're in four wheel drive. Right, right now it's not turning. We get in there and it turns. And because everything's, because you got that there and you got this piece putting, this is just acting like a bridge between here and here. That's all it's doing. So we're gonna put this back in. We're gonna put this in here like this. We're gonna put our split ring in here. Snap ring back on here. Push her, push her thing out. Like that. Right? Put this back on. This is going to go in here like that. Alright, and then when we turn this in, we dial it this way, it locks the hub in. Locks it in. Locks everything in. Pops it back out. So it's pretty neat. Pretty cool how that works. I didn't know that myself, so now I know. I'm knowing this half the battle, as G.I. Joe says. Okay, so we're going to put the tire back on again. And this time we're going to go for a ride, not die. So come back. Put my seatbelt on because it went bad drive. So we got the um, seat. It's always weird because they're not power brakes, you know, so it's kind of strange. It's like the same brakes that you got on a uh, Amish wagon that you got on this thing. No power booster. So um, it's interesting. How is it? Keep the beast alive. Slam him. Slam him. Slam him. Stop it. I, I never liked the way it stopped because it doesn't have power. So to me, it's like... like when Once they're loaded up, they stop better than regular brakes. Right? Usually, once you got them loaded... Thanks. So. She's old. It's loving and caressing. You gotta caress it. You gotta rub her. You gotta treat her like the fine wine she is. Wow. So, this Jeep here. Jeep. Well, anyway, guys, so that's how you change out the calipers on a, on a 70s era CJ7. Um, and also how you tighten up the nut holding your um, your hub on. So thanks for checking us out. Please 
hit like and subscribe somewhere down here. And also check me out on Squid Moto. Check out my other videos and make sure you guys hit subscribe. It really means a lot for you to subscribe. Check me out on Facebook at Evolve and Mail, TikTok, and Instagram at Evolve and Mail. And as always, guys, thanks and peace out. It's pretty good once you get it going. Just good once you get it going. It's just that. Oh yeah, it'll smooth, it smooths itself out. Well, plus, it yeah, it's like a horse. I told you, it's like a, it's like a damn, um, a buggy from a, from a, uh, <laughs> Amish buggy. It's an Amish buggy. Anyway, that's it, guys. That's the end of the video. Thanks for checking me out. Please keep an eye out for all the other stuff we're gonna do and all the crazy things we got going on. So anyway, guys, peace out. Yeah.